Hello, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. Benedetto Artist, Sunnyside Records. Got my uh, discography up here including the almost brand new. It's been out for a minute. Uh, way back. It's my favorite one, y'all. Um, I got two Mel Bay books, Into the Labyrinth, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary. And uh, let's see, it's uh, early April over here at UNT and we're at that point in the semester where uh, well, I'll put it this way, I tried to do this video yesterday when I had a little more time and my brain sort of shut down and I kept making like <laughs> mistakes. Oh, so I had to try it again today. So it's that uh, that level of, uh, you know, we're doing it, but uh, we're kind of like the walking wounded around here. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk to you all today about a song that you might think is a little bit simplistic. Uh, based on some of the other types of repertoire that I've been covering in these videos the last couple of years. But uh, the song uh, Love Is Here To Stay or Our Love Is Here To Stay by George Gershwin. And the reason I want to do it is I, I feel like I find myself in these situations with this song where I never actually like learned it properly, um, perhaps, and I'm always kind of reading it off of a, a vocalist chart in some key or uh, it kind of gets called and you have about 15 seconds to try to remember <laughs> basically what happens going into, I mean the song is a sort of A, B, A, C uh, kind of first and second ending 32 bar song and the things that happen going into the B section and then going into the sort of C section and the different uh, variations on that, I never really had the time to sit down and uh, you know, like maybe I'd hear a version in passing on the radio because it's such a popular song and every vocalist did it and in like the 50s um, and 60s it's just on everybody's record. So I'm like, oh, is that what they play there? But I never sat down with it. Anyway, so I'm sitting down with it right now for this video and hopefully this is a little bit instructive for people that have to play this song a lot. So, uh, but first, I have a little sip of my, my coffee here. I don't want it to get cold. I got an improv class in about half an hour. Let's see. Let's do this. So uh, <laughs> this tune, uh, I think it's this, I read on Wikipedia, which you know I know it's not 100% right all the time, but it sounds plausible. This was the last tune that Gershwin wrote before he died, or last like sort of pop song, and that Ira, his brother, uh, wrote the lyrics. Our love is here to stay as a sort of a tribute to uh, his brother who passed away very young. I think he was 39 or something. Which is but uh, anyway, the, maybe the first sort of famous version would have been like Gene Kelly in uh, American in Paris in the film, where it's in the key of E flat. Then we got Sinatra, um, I mean there's probably other versions in there, but Sinatra on Songs for Swingin' Lovers, Nelson Riddle, I love those records so much, the Nelson Riddle, Sinatra things. Uh, Louis Armstrong, Ella and Louie. I think Ellen Louie again, like the sequel album. And then Bill Evans on an uh, album I really like, uh, the Bill Evans trio, Shelley's Manhole, a live record. It's great with Chuck Israels and it's not Paul Bosch, is it? I forget who's on drums, forgive me. And I think it's also on Trio 64 or 5. One of those ones in there, mid, early mid 60s. And so basically, everybody, I'll try to keep it in E flat because mm -hmm. Sinatra's in D. <laughs> He's always in like a sharp key on those records or often in a sharp key. And Bill Evans is an F. And I think when I get, it gets called on a gig, I sort of like, uh, okay, let's do it in F. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna do it in E flat because that seems like the, the consensus, uh, I don't know, or the whatever. I'm gonna do it in E flat because that seems right. So most people go like F7, it's very clear, then like B flat seven or B flat sus, B flat, E flat. And then sometimes you'll have like one, four, three, six to get you back to F. Although I kind of just like very clear, our love is here to stay. And maybe sneak in the C7 if you want. You don't necessarily have to do the whole cycle of the one, four, three, six, but you know you can. And you can superimpose that on top of the the band just playing the uh, the one chord maybe the six. Then you repeat that. Together we go in a long, long way. And that spot. What are we supposed to play, y'all? So let's look at it. Uh, I believe I actually listened to these versions yesterday, so hopefully I'm not going to get them mixed up. 
Uh, I listened to him and my brain was working well and then I tried to do this video and my brain went. So I believe Gene Kelly, we got a long, long way, and it's a string, string arrangement, so you're putting chord symbols on it, it's kind of a dicey proposition to begin with, but basically like D flat 7, C7, F7, C7, F minor, B flat, E flat, and then from that point on, most versions are the same. So that's what Gene Kelly does. D flat 7, C7, or whoever wrote the string arrangement. F7, and it hangs for a second. And then B flat 7. So you kind of have this Gershwin esque cycle of dominance, like. So those changes strike me as kind of fun, like kind of Gershwin y. Um, the D flat 7, C7, Bill Evans kind of does the same thing, uh, but then he follows that up with like A minor 7, D7, G minor, C7, F minor, B flat 7, E flat. Of course, he's an F. Uh, Louis Armstrong with uh, the Oscar Peterson trio, so they're like, not for a year, forever and a day. Minor seven, kind of flat five, C seven, F sharp diminished, and they're actually the the kind of outlier because instead of going to like a G minor to go three six two five or like Gene Kelly is sort of four five to F F minor B flat seven C seven F minor, Oscar Peterson goes to to F minor and then E diminished F minor B flat seven. Flat. So that's really, really different. So, uh, together we go in a long, long way. The telephone and the movies. So, I don't know. They're the only ones that do that. I don't think I've ever seen that or encountered that on a gig. But then again, I've played that song, this song, from so many different random charts and, and vocalist books that I have no idea what I've played there. And uh, Sinatra and Nelson Riddle are going, uh, going a long, long way. Oh, sorry, they go, huh? G minor, C7, F7, and then walk up to G minor, so. Going a long, long way. A G minor seven flat five, and sometimes I, I think that the bass is playing D flat because I'm I'm used to this. I think that's what I play and what Bill Evans plays, but the bass is actually playing G on Nelson Riddle and uh, what's his name, Oscar? Uh, no, the other one, Gene Kelly. Come on, brain, stick in there with me. So that's a, that's a little bit of variation. I think harmonically it's all kind of the same. The functionality of it, like D flat seven, C seven, G minor seven flat five, C seven. F7, although really it's the Oscar Peterson that, that stands out. It's G minor 7 flat 5, C7, F diminished to F minor as being a little bit different. The thing that happens on the uh, Nelson Riddle is that uh, they're going like C7, F7, they go 3, 6, 2, 5, and then the 1 is dominant. flat 5 G7 so you have this moving line of passing fancy and and I like how you know on, on Nelson Riddle there's a break there you know going back to the repeat back to the two chord when I was younger I always wanted there to be like a, a C7 or a 5 of 2 rather than just have it be like 2 5, a B flat 7, and then have the B, B flat 7 go back to F7. That used to offend my sense of like, I don't know, <laughs> something. I wanted to, I couldn't play like my, my licks the way I wanted to play. But now I kind of like how it just, if it sits on B flat 7 before going back to F7, and you can just kind of deal with the, uh, I don't know, plagal kind of vibe going on there. So anyway. Sinatra 
Sinatra does. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Gene Kelly, I believe they do B flat seven, C seven again, F minor, B flat seven. And then there's another ending here. Oscar Peterson and them go G minor seven, C seven. F sharp diminished, although the second time Oscar Peterson goes, they go to G minor. They don't do that crazy F minor, E diminished thing. They go G minor, C7. They kind of line up with everybody else. And then uh, going into the C section, there's some variations. So on the we're only uh, made, of, they're only made of clay. Rockies may tumble, yeah, the mountains made of clay. Uh, Gene Kelly and them go C7, they're only D flat seven, C seven, F minor, F sharp diminished, and then kind of a three six two five over the five, the pedal. And uh, let's see, uh, Nelson Riddle. We've got uh, so they've gone. In time, the Rockies may crumble, Gibraltar may tumble. G minor seven flat five, C seven. F minor over A flat, A diminished. And then again, 3, 6, 2, 5. There's a pedal in there somewhere. Um, this is one where the Bill Evans is a little different. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to keep all these versions straight in my head. So yeah, Bill Evans, he goes. Uh, he always goes to the A minor, D7. Seven, and then he goes F, uh, E flat, sorry. Only made of clay. A minor, seven flat, five. A flat minor, three, six, two, five. Of course, he's an F. And one other thing, the Oscar Peterson, uh, I sort of, uh, yeah, I haven't talked about them yet. So they do their thing. Three, six, they line up with everybody on the two, five. Then they're the ones that go E flat. Flat seven over G, A flat major, A diminished, and that's always what I go to. Like when I'm on a gig, I guess I'm always remembering the Oscar Peterson, uh, Louis Armstrong with Ella Fitzgerald because that's what I. Uh, and I know there's Oscar has his own version, but I know the Ellen Louis real well, so I kind of go to that. But I feel like sometimes it'll clash with what the uh, bass player is doing, you know, in the moment, and I'm always like, oh, that's the spot I got to go back and review what people actually play there. So that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Hopefully that's uh, kind of instructive. Then the question becomes, okay, so what do you play? And you have choices, right? I mean, if it's your gig, you could bring somebody a chart. I don't know if you, in the 30 seconds you have to talk, talk it through with people or decide what to play. I would say that that unusual thing that uh, Oscar Peterson does with Louis Armstrong going into the, you know, the B section, I don't know if I would pull that out because I don't think anybody plays that. I think the Bill Evans thing with going to, again, this is in the key of E flat, going A minor, D7, before G minor, C7, F minor, B flat 7, is probably the most common. Um, you know, and I understand that I kind of like the idea of D flat 7, C7, F7, and then maybe a walk up to G minor, just because it sounds more Gershwin y to me. cycle of dominance. I don't know, I'm going to use that on the, uh, the, when I play over the tune and see, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, because my brain's probably going to want to go to, but A minor 7, right? A minor 7 flat 5 and F7, kind of the same thing, right? And then F sharp diminished to G minor. And I understand why it got turned into A minor 7, D7, so we can play our, our two fives on it and stuff like that, you know. I'm not uh, opposed to that idea. But I kind of like that. And then it, at the end, you know, I kind of like going into the second ending, you know. Uh, I kind of like that. I'm not uh, crazy about the one, one over three, four, sharp four diminished thing. I don't know. I always feel a little bit like constricted by that. So I think I'd be into going back to F minor there. F minor, F sharp to G minor instead of A flat, A diminished to E flat over B flat, which is pretty close to the same harmony. I don't know. Um, and I don't think I would do that. Even though people play most Bill Evans stuff, I don't really play a lot of the Bill Evans changes. I've never encountered anybody going like, uh, 
flat five or B minor seven flat five, you know, walking down to uh, the three, six, two, five. So I don't know. Uh, but you know, in terms of playing, that I don't like to play just because I'm so conditioned to go like one, one over three, uh, you know, E flat, or G, A flat, even though I kind of like, uh, theoretically I like F minor to F sharp diminished again, but that's kind of the same harmony. So anyway, y'all, I hope that was instructive in looking at the different ways that uh, those slightly uh, nebulous parts of the song go down in uh, Ellen Louie, Sinatra, uh, Gene Kelly, American in Paris, and uh, Bill Evans. So I'll play a few courses on this thing and uh, see if you can tell what chords I'm playing. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 